Germany will, quote, do justice to its responsibilities. That is the message coming today from German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. He used an address before the country's parliament to double down on his government's commitment to supporting Ukraine and other international allies. In a wide-ranging speech, the chancellor said that the European Union and NATO have joined forces like never before to fight against Russian imperialism. He said that Germany knows from its own history that alliances are important and that Germany remains a reliable partner. In the biggest security challenge in Europe for decades, Germany, as the most densely populated and largest country in the EU, is doing justice to its responsibility. Taking responsibility not just for its own security, but also that of its allies. Two weeks ago, when I was in the Baltic states, I made it clear that an attack on the Baltic states would be an attack on all of us. All right, let's pull in our political correspondent, Simon Young. He's been following that speech for us. Simon, yeah, security was at the forefront of the chancellor's speech there. But it, it, I mean, I was hearing not just security for Germany, but um, Germany's responsibility vis-a-vis -vis its, its allies when we're talking about security. What did you hear? Well, that's right, Brent. Olaf Scholz uh, repeated a commitment that he made back at the start of the war uh, in Ukraine, uh, saying that uh, we will uh, protect every centimetre of NATO territory. And he says that uh, Germany is doing that by uh, beefing up its own uh, military spending, uh, but also by sending uh, troops and materiel to NATO's uh, eastern flank and showing its commitment that way, but of course also uh, by uh, the support that it's given to Ukraine, both uh, financial uh, and increasingly uh, in the form of uh, direct military support as well. In, Simon, the Chancellor today, he, he tried to quash the idea that he is uh, moving too slowly on helping Ukraine. Did he achieve what he wanted to? I guess that will depend on uh, wider perceptions. There certainly are plenty of people here in Germany, um, opposition politicians and others who uh, think that uh, the progress has been too slow and too hesitant. Uh, will other world leaders, uh, you know, give Germany the credit that Olaf Scholz thinks it deserves? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, he's got a week of summit meetings coming up, uh, in particular the NATO summit here in Germany at the weekend and the beginning of next week. Uh, and we may hear more there, particularly President Zelensky of Ukraine himself will be part of that NATO summit uh, by video link. Uh, and uh, now that the first heavy weapons from Germany have actually begun to arrive in Ukraine, perhaps some of the criticism uh, of uh, Germany's uh, cautious approach uh, will uh, die down. Our political correspondent Simon Young with the latest tonight here in Berlin. Simon, thank you. Well, in his speech today, German Chancellor Schultz also said that Ukraine has every right to defend itself, adding that it is our duty, Germany's duty, to support Ukraine as best we can. Germany has faced international criticism, however, for its initial reluctance to supply Ukraine with weapons and then for the time that it took to deliver them. The German Panzerhaubitze 2000, one of the most sophisticated artillery systems in the world. Almost five months after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, seven of these self-propelled howitzers have finally arrived on the battlefield. Germany has long been accused of dragging its heels over the delivery of lethal aid to Ukraine. To counter such criticism, Berlin has released a lengthy list of weapons and equipment it has handed over to Kyiv. It includes Panzerfaust infantry anti-tank rocket launchers, Man portable air defense systems or man pads that enable soldiers to down enemy aircraft. 60 million rounds of ammunition. These deliveries proved useful in the early stages of the war when Ukrainian forces ambushed Russian columns, often at close range. But against the mass artillery deployed by Russia in its Donbass offensive, Ukraine needs more heavy guns of its own. Germany has been slow to react, unlike some of its NATO allies. The US has delivered over 100 of these modern artillery pieces and will soon send long-range missile systems. 
Poland has donated at least 18 self-propelled howitzers and hundreds of Soviet-era tanks. Germany, too, has pledged more heavy equipment. On the to-do list, the Gepard self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, effective against low-flying aircraft. The Mars multiple launch rocket system, able to hit targets up to 80 kilometers away. And the state-of-the-art IRST anti-aircraft system, able to clear the sky of enemy aircraft and missiles. But the first batch of Gepards and the Mars launchers are only slated for delivery in July. The Iris T might only arrive in Ukraine in October. A long wait for a country under constant attack from the air. My next guest is Nicholas Drummond. He's a defense industry analyst and a former officer in the British Army. Mr. Drummond, it's good to have you with us. So now that these German, this heavy weapons are on the battlefield in Ukraine, will we see a difference when it comes to how Ukraine is able to push back the Russian military? Well, these weapons are extremely good in their own right. Uh, the Panzer Howitzer 2000 is probably one of the most capable uh, artillery pieces in service across NATO. Range of 70 kilometers with the latest ammunition types, able to deliver five rounds on target simultaneously. But ultimately, you know, we're only providing a, a limited quantity of these. And really what Ukraine needs is, is, uh, is mass, because there's no substitute for, for quantity. Um, as well as quality. And I'm sure you're aware um, that... Oh, let, if I could, let me just ask you about the, these weapons and delivering them. You know, the German government has been criticized massively for how long it has taken, four months. Um, how big of a hurdle are the logistics here? <clears throat> well, the, it is not just the howitzers themselves. It's the ammunition that, that, that supplies them. And before you can use them effectively, you have to deliver all the ammunition that's needed. I mean, there's no point in having howitzers unless you have a good supply of ammunition. So that whole logistics planning has to be very carefully coordinated with the Ukrainian forces. And the second really important factor is that you have to train the crews. And this is a highly sophisticated piece of equipment and requires um, a, 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 an experienced crew to use it effectively on the battlefield. So those two factors alone will have delayed its introduction into service, irrespective of any of the um, political background to the delivery of such weapons. We've been following you on Twitter, and you have uh, been arguing that Germany's hesitancy, perhaps, um, to send military support um, is not a weakness. In fact, you have written that it's a sign of integrity. Why do you think so? Well, I think Germany's behaved very well indeed. Um, after the Second World War, it decided that it wanted to be a country built on economic strength, not military strength, and therefore it adopted pretty much um, a pacifist mindset. And it realized that it was not going to um, sponsor a massive build-up build of weapons uh, and so on. And then, of course, it realized that actually the pacifist approach would not deter uh, uh, an adversary like Russia. And Schultz announced after the invasion of Ukraine by Russia in February, we have to change. We were wrong. We have to be strong because he only understands strength, not weakness. And we are weak if we don't invest in defense. And that was, you know, Germany's like an aircraft carrier. It takes 10 kilometers to turn around. And he's had to lead not only his own party, but the whole German people on this journey. And I think he's done it with great um, political dexterity. And uh, as far as the UK is concerned, Germany's a great ally and doing extremely well. In his speech today, the German Chancellor, I mean, he, he said that this support for Ukraine, particularly with weapons, will continue as long as the country needs it. And you know, we're not talking about um, a, a quick end to this war. So do you read this as Germany abandoning um, this, it's this approach, you know, that you have praised. Uh, no, I think Germany realizes now that this is going to be a long-term commitment that will not change until there's a change of government in the in, in Russia. And not that we're not going to drive a change of government, by the way, but that will have to come from within. But so long as that regime remains in place, Russia will be a threat not only to the Ukraine but to the rest of Europe. I mean, Russia is extremely 
angry, Putin is angry that we have supported Ukraine. He thought this was going to be a walk in the park, and it's been anything but that, thanks to NATO's support of Ukraine. So if we don't support Ukraine, if we allow Russia to win, it will come after us with a vengeance. And therefore, we are committed to this for the long term, for as long as it takes. Defense industry analyst Nicholas Drummond. Mr. Drummond, we appreciate your time and your valuable insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.